do that. When you are sick and when you're doing the therapy and when you have to recover, you must not use these chemicals. But by far the worst, not just the, uh, to put on the skin, you know, various ointments and creams, they block the pores, they're absorbed into the body. When you eat right and drink right, my skin is smooth and natural and normal. You'll notice I have no liver spots. I use no creams and ointments. It's soft as a baby's. I don't need anything because from within the body is healed. Just a minute. Um, so your skin is going to heal and be natural and normal and thin and healthy and no problem, okay? But of all the things that you do, the, I think the absolute worst is underarm deodorants and antiperspirants, okay? Now, you got to first understand why that is so bad. <clears throat> The body has a whole number of systems that help detoxify. We talked about that a lot. The liver and the intestinal tract detoxifies a lot. Uh, the kidneys detoxify very intensively. But when none of these systems work very well, the body also has another system, the perspiration, the glands. And some people that are ill and toxic, they have night sweats. What happens when you rest? Another system takes over and detoxes. And you get rid of a whole lot of toxic substances in the sweating, okay? Now, when that happens, a lot of people say, oh, I smell and I'm not socially acceptable. I have to stop this perspiration. Hey, wait a minute. If you smell, then your body is getting rid of highly toxic, damaging substances. And instead of stopping it, blocking your uh, perspiration, your ducts, your glands and your ducts, and forcing the chemicals back into your lymph system and the breast, let them out. So how do you get rid of the smell? How do you get rid of these toxins? First of all, you don't put any toxins into your body. You eat organic vegetarian food without poisons, without toxins. Secondly, would you believe that the best way to get rid of the night sweats and the smelly perspiration is a coffee enema? Help your body detoxify the right way through the kidneys and the liver, through the coffee enemas and the juices. And I assure you, you will have no unpleasant smell and you don't have to block the perspiration. Now, when you normally perspire, like it's too hot, or it's a hot day, or it's summer, or you do heavy work, okay, you're going to perspire. I assure you, your perspiration is not going to be smelly. Now, I don't want to take any responsibility. If you're not going to wash for six months, you're going to smell. But if you normally keep clean, and your body normally is clean inside, you're not going to have smelly perspiration, and for heaven's sakes, don't use any sticks, any minerals, any sprays, any uh, blockers of any kind. Put nothing under your arms except soap and water. Wash. Because if you block this perspiration and force the chemicals back into your lymph system, I have a feeling that some, there may be something there that helps to cause breast cancer. Another thing is very important. Uh, I understand that breast cancer in men is rapidly increasing. And I have a strong suspicion that underarm deodorants have something to do with it. So please be very careful with cosmetics, creams, ointments, lipstick, anything at all. Now we let you use a little eye pencil if you must. But otherwise, also please don't use nail polish. It blocks the respiration within the nails. It gives me acute pain. It feels like something is putting on a nail, a, a screw, and tightening it. Okay? I can't handle it. The lady asked, don't they have non-toxic cosmetics in health food stores? Yes, they call it non-allergenic or something like that. But what is it? Like lipstick, right? Now, what is in lipstick? Wax, dyes, solvents, perfumes. Do you want to eat that? Would you take a lipstick and take a bite and eat it? Well, you're eating it, goes on your lips, and eventually it disappears. Well, how come? Because 
you wipe your lips and you eat it. You don't want to eat that. No matter how they call it non-allergenic, it is not there because it blocks your pores, it goes into your body, it blocks your underarm perspiration and it is dangerous. And if you are ill and if you are on the Gerson therapy, if you want to get well, you're not going to use it. Including, of course, fluoridated toothpaste and hair bleaches and even permanence, Dr. Gerson forbade. Okay? And also rubbing alcohol under the arms. You can use what Dr. Gerson describes in the back of a book, something like an alcohol, water, and vinegar in equal parts, a rub to rub on the skin, and you can rub that a little bit on you, yes. But I tell you again, you don't need it. If your body is normally healthy, inside and out, clean, cleansed, you don't need it. A normal washing once a day, and if you are perspiring because of hard work or so, hot weather, an extra wash, and you will not have any problem. Okay? All right. You brush your teeth, essentially, with a brush. If you must use a little toothpaste, be sure it's not fluoridated. There are some toms and shifts, I think, put out some, but you've got to be careful because they want to help you out and they, because there's so much demand for fluoridated toothpaste, they put out both, fluoridated and none. Be sure you don't use fluoridated toothpaste. And if you use any toothpaste at all, use only a tiny bit, you don't need it. It's for just cosmetic purposes, for a little flavor, and the flavor is sugar and, and, and chemicals and you want to try to avoid that, okay? All right. I also would like to talk quickly about ozone. Ozone is extremely valuable. Ozone has an extra O, which is a very active element, and the extra O, the active oxygen of the O, is, uh, helps tumor tissue, it helps destroy tumor tissue. It helps uh, oxygenate the body. It is extremely valuable, ozone. We use it rectally. It's absorbed into the body and it raises oxygen levels in the blood and helps kill tumor tissue. You can also use hydrogen peroxide if you know what you're doing and you use it correctly. The hydrogen peroxide that you buy in, uh, in uh, pharmacies uh, has uh, a three percent, is a three percent solution, but it has, uh, in addition, uh, certain stabilizing agents which are not good, so you cannot use it internally. But the three percent solution you can rub into your skin, and it is very valuable, it's very helpful, okay? But if you're going to use it internally, you, you have to have the clean, uh, uh, the food grade material and you have to use it correctly because it comes somewhere between 12 and 36, 35 percent and that is dangerous. You've got to know how to use it for internal use, not more than half percent. And most people don't know how to reduce something that's 12 percent to half a percent. Anybody? Well, I just get out my calculator and do it. <laughs> now, how do you reduce something that's 12 percent to half a percent? 24, 1 in 24, no? Simple. No, oh, no calculator. It's quite easy. If it happens to be 35% and 1 to half percent, now what do you do? I can figure it out. 70. Sure. I'm glad you can figure it out. Okay. How about that teeth? You can very well brush your teeth with half percent solution, but do it right and know you got half percent and no higher because if it's higher, you're going to hurt yourself. You have to have a food grade? Should be for internal, you should you have a food grade. And if you have a cold, for instance, or a sore throat, you can gargle with it as long as it's half percent and you do it right. And if you do it anything stronger, you can kill yourself, so please be careful. Okay. How about soda for fresh teeth? What's soda? What is it? I guess it's... Uh, soda? Maybe poison? All sodium is poison. Baking soda, eating salt, poison. 
Maybe it's ever sold? It's so 